Did you know that today, February 29th, 2024, is Rare Disease Day? And on this special day, Midwestern University College of Pharmacy has partnered with the National Organization for Rare Disorders to help normalize rare disorders during this month's Community Health Lecture Series. Midwestern University's free Community Health Lecture Series continues to serve the community by offering presentations on various healthcare topics from the university's faculty experts. The information presented in these lectures is provided for informational purposes only and is not used to diagnose any condition. This information is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, care, or treatment. And it's always best to consult with your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions regarding any possible medical condition. My name is Dr. Melinda Burnworth, and I am a hospital pharmacist by training and also a professor of pharmacy practice at Midwestern University's College of Pharmacy in Glendale, Arizona. I wear multiple hats, and today I am representing both the university and also I serve as the volunteer community ambassador for the National Organization for Rare Disorders. I am located out of Phoenix, Arizona. And I am Dr. Karen Nagel Edwards. I'm also a pharmacist and a PhD and teach in our Downers Grove, Illinois campus. And I'm part of our Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Um, my reason for being here is I do have a very strong interest in orphan drugs, which are very commonly used to treat these disorders that we'll be talking about today. And hello, my name is Alicia Lawrence, and I am from the National Organization for Rare Disorders. I am the Information and Resource Services Manager here at NORD. And uh, my role in, as the Information and Resource Services Manager is to provide, of course, information resources to families, caregivers, and anyone who has wants resources as it relates to the rare disease community. Thank you. Um, today, us three will be serving as your experts on rare disorders. So during today's panel discussions, the audience will learn about what a rare disease is, explore gaps in the healthcare system related to these rare disorders, and also hear about easy to implement solutions. Now throughout the presentation, we encourage you to add your questions in the chat or the comment box. During the first part of the discussion today, let us learn more about rare diseases. First, what is a rare or orphan disease? The National Institutes of Health defines a rare disease as any disease, disorder, illness, or a condition affecting fewer than 200,000 individuals in the United States. You know, while we are talking about statistics today during the presentation, it is important to know that these are individuals that are impacted by rare disorders. And all too often, rare patients and family are left isolated and without answers or support for their medical needs. But it doesn't have to be that way. How many people are affected by rare diseases? Collectively, more than 30 million Americans live with a rare disease. In fact, one in 10 Americans is living with a rare disorder. Furthermore, over 350 million individuals worldwide are affected by rare diseases. Why does rare disease matter? What is the impact of rare diseases on individuals and families? Rare disease medical costs are three to five times higher than the non-rare diseases. Studies, studies collectively suggest that the rare disease costs for the U.S. are more than $1 trillion annually. And too often, rare diseases devastate individuals and families emotionally, physically, and financially. Can you expand on rare disease diagnosis and treatment? There are more than 10,000 known rare diseases, and many times patients and caregivers experience what we call a diagnostic odyssey, 
whereby it can take five years or longer to get a diagnosis of a rare disorder. And unfortunately, most of these rare disorders lack an FDA approved medication, treatment or cure. FDA stands for the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA um, has a separate category of medications called orphan drugs that are often designed to treat these rare disorders. Based on our discussion so far, rare disease is an urgent public health challenge. No person or family is immune from a rare disease. As proof, um, you know, we'll hopefully get some people chiming in from the chat. We don't have anyone yet, but we do encourage anyone either who has questions about rare diseases or may have one themselves or have a family member to chime in with comments. During the second half of our discussion, let's reflect on how to narrow the gap in healthcare related to rare disorders by sharing some easy to use resources. And where can people go to find out more about rare diseases? For more than 40 years, the National Organization for Rare Disorders has served as a trusted voice leading patient advocacy organization fighting to improve the lives of over 30 million Americans with rare diseases. We do that by driving advances in care, research, and policy. NORD has developed a comprehensive database, which where you can find more than 12,000 rare diseases. Again, not all rare diseases, but you know we do try to um, keep that updated on a regular basis where you can use the database to explore um, information about uh, diseases, um, which include information on symptoms, causes, treatments, clinical trials, and also um, resources and patient advocacy organizations. And you can learn more about that at rarediseases.org. Um, we also have, um, a, you know, our information and resource services team, which is um, what I manage, so that if you don't see particularly see your particular diagnosis, you know, you can always reach out to us, um, and we'll be able to assist you further. How can people get involved in Rare Disease Day? That is a, a good question. Today, we are celebrating on Leap Year Day, um, Rare Disease Day. And February is the rarest month out of the year. Most years, it's 28 days, but today is extra special because we have our 29th day. And Rare Disease Day is always celebrated on the last month of February. And it's a day where all rare disease patients, caregivers, and even those that are un with an undiagnosed rare disorder can come together and um, support each other, advocate for one another. And the official go-to destination for Rare Disease Day in the U.S. is rarediseaseday.us. It's there that you will find additional information and you can search for events that are happening all across the nation. What is the role of advocacy in rare diseases? Advocacy is what Rare Disease Day is all about. And part of NORD, we have the Rare Action Network, which is a uh, the nation's leading advocacy network. And we work to improve, like I said, the lives of 30 million Americans living with a rare disease. Um, with rare, it's an opportunity to share with stakeholders, uh, patients, families, caregivers, and friends. We also have researchers um, in industry, physicians, and academia. And while working predominantly at the state level, this network allows information to filter through federal policies to address issues as a national concern. And again, you can learn more about the Rare Action Network, RAN, as we like to call it, at uh, rareaction.org. And we're actually nearing the end of our time today, but again, do encourage anyone to comment in the chat. But in closing, do you know why the zebra is the official mascot of the rare disease community? Historically, medical professionals were told that when they hear hoof beats, 
they should think about horses and not zebras. In other words, they were taught to think of more common explanations for the patient's symptoms. But now that we know that actually one in 10 Americans is a zebra, hopefully rare disorders um, gets more focus and emphasis in medical curriculum. So speaking of zebras, I do encourage if there's anyone in the audience, if you'd like to enter your comments in the, the chat or the comment section. And while we're waiting for you to enter some of those, um, I, I do have some, some questions or some comments to provide. So Karen, um, are you wondering where I'm live streaming from today? Yes. Uh, because that does not look like a Midwestern office that you are sitting in. So today being Rare Disease Day, there is a, a group of advocates down at the Arizona State Capitol, and um, we are advocating for a Rare Disease Advisory Council, or what we call an RDAC. And we have the opportunity, uh, our proclamation or a statement of support from the House of Representatives and the Senate was read on both of those chamber floors today. And later on this afternoon, we will be meeting with the governor's office as well to talk about increasing awareness of rare disorders and creating the RDAC, which will be a group of both medical professionals and patients, caregivers, individuals living with rare disorders. That's awesome. And do you happen to have that proclamation to show? Yes, I was just about to say that. <laughs> I'm so glad that you asked. This is our official gold seal from the Arizona Chambers. And this is um, the proclamation that we that was read. This was in the House of Representatives. And we also have a separate one for the Arizona Senate. It's on much bigger paper. <laughs> and then we will be meeting with the, the governor's office later today, and we will get a third official gold seal um, stamping February 29th, leap year day 2024, as Rare Disease Day in Arizona. Congratulations on that. That is amazing. That's what we like to hear at Nord. So that's great. We have had a comment come in. So I'm going to see if I can get that to come up on screen, which I do not seem to be able to do. Oh, there it is. Do rare diseases affect one group of people more than others? So overall, there's approximately 30 million individuals that are impacted by rare disorders, but approximately 50% are actually pediatric patients. So 15 million individuals that have a rare disorder are actually children. And many of these children, unfortunately, will only celebrate four birthdays. That was a great question. Also, I just want to add to that, um, that 80% um, of the rare diseases are genetic. So along with um, what Melinda said there, you know, we also have to keep in mind that 80% are um, genetic. And also, there's uh, more than 90% of rare diseases lack FDA approved medication. So that's just an important point I'd like to make as well. Alicia, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up that point of emphasis regarding the lack of pharmacotherapy. And this is where further research on particular drugs that would treat an or, um, orphan disease comes into play. So Karen, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about orphan drugs and some of the individualized treatment that we have available for various rare disorders. Yes, we are getting more and more treatments for some of these conditions, particularly a lot of enzyme deficiency conditions that are genetic based. And so, you know, young children 
show up with these disorders and they tend to be very expensive treatments, but it can definitely help improve lifetime and lifespan because as you mentioned before, a lot of these children otherwise would only have a few birthdays and it can really help improve um, lifespan and for people with milder diseases, just getting them to a much more functional state. We're also in the past few years seeing more and more um, nucleic acid therapies, things like gene therapy or RNA interference being used to treat a lot of conditions. One of the ones that's been recently in the news a lot is sickle cell disorder, where we have two gene therapy treatments, one which is more of a genome editing CRISPR type technique and another that's more standard that have been approved. And they're very expensive treatments, but once the patient has been treated, it should be a lifetime treatment. And if you look at cost of the disease and limited lifespan that can happen with some of these conditions, the more of those types of things we get, hopefully the better outcomes we'll have for patients. So I, I know one of the barriers that we face as healthcare professionals is these rare disorders and orphan drugs are not always taught in the required curriculum. So um, along with Karen, I've created an elective course at Midwestern University. It's called Rare and Interesting Diseases. And this is a forum where our pharmacy students are able to dive into the, the details and the lived experiences of individuals that have been impacted by a rare disorder. So you might be wondering, well, we're talking about rare disorders in general, but what are some um, examples of rare disorders? So this is where Lou Gehrig's disease is a rare disorder, porphyria is a rare disorder, Pitt-Hopkins syndrome. There, there's various different rare disorders. It's estimated now 10,000 different rare disorders. So this is where being knowledgeable about um, the re reliable resources are very important, especially when we get out in clinical practice. And NORD, through their Information and Resource Services Center, they have developed that pretty comprehensive um, rare disease database. It does cover about 1,200 um, rare disorders, and we, we are narrowing the gap. There's over 10,000, but we're looking for um, more health professionals and patients sharing their lived experiences with these disorders. So that way we can put together various um, health guides to increase the understanding of a rare disorder and the best management or treatment. We have had a LinkedIn comment come in that is really good and I'm going to bring that up on screen. Rare diseases do not receive the attention needed to help those suffering from them, especially since, as mentioned earlier, because of FDA approval of certain medications. How can we encourage more attention to be directed toward rare diseases so more research and medications can be developed? And I feel like this might be a good place to ask you, Mindy, about um, what um, cultural icon kind of helped get the Orphan Drug Act going. That, that we talked about in our talk in December. So um, cultural icon. TV um, shows. What? TV shows. Yes. So um, when we think about increase in awareness about rare disorders, it's really that word of mouth power. And word of mouth power can occur at various levels. It can occur um, within the family circle. It can um, occur within the network circle. And it all can go all the way up through the legislature. And even our Hollywood stars can bring attention to rare disorders. And um, about 1980 or so was when the first medical television series um, 
Oh my Quincy Medical Quincy. Examiner. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're their first episode featuring an individual with Tourette syndrome. And that really is what brought more public attention to rare disorders. So that was in about 1980 or so. And in um, in between 1980, 1983, this is where a small group of advocates um, family members that were impacted by rare disorders um, advocated for the adoption of the Orphan Drug Act. And in 1983, the Orphan Drug Act was um, written into law by President Ronald Reagan. And that same year, 1983, was when Nord was also founded. And it just so happens that the founder of Nord was the instrumental person in um, bringing forward the Orphan Drug Act and also founding Nord. Okay, thank you. And we have another question that's come in. What support groups exist for those diagnosed with a rare disease? I can answer that. So um, like we talked about earlier, the National Organization for Rare Disorders, NORD, is the, usually the first place where um, individuals will go um, to find out more about rare diseases. But along with NORD, we have over 300 uh, member organizations that are disease specific. So if it is that you're looking for a, you know, a support group for a particular diagnosis, um, you know, you can go to the NORD website and look for that. Or um, we have ways of communicating, like I said, our information and resource services team would be able to provide that information as well. And one of the, the most meaningful methods I feel to connect with others with a particular rare disorder is getting active in various Facebook groups or other support groups, participating in rare disease day activities. Um, it's all about word of mouth power. And while many of these rare disorders, they may impact, you know, only one in 1,000, less than 200,000 individuals, but through word of mouth power and leaning on others for support, I feel like this is where many individuals are able to connect with one another. I'd like to also add too, like with um, with the rare disease, with Reaction Network, um, you know, in going to that website, we do have state profiles. And, you know, if it is that you're interested in just joining a community in your state, you know, I would encourage you to, to look at the website. Um, some states do have a actual ambassadors, which are volunteers who, um, hey, <laughs> who are willing and ready to assist in any way. And if it is you want to hold an event or just have any questions. Um, so that's also a really good resource if it is that you're looking to connect with others as well. Well, thank you, Alicia, for promoting the Rare Action Network. Um, on the, the NORD website, in addition to the Rare Action Network or RAN, one of the new initiatives with NORD is the Centers of Excellence, or COE, across the nation. So I know one of the comments mentioned, um, you know, how can we increase drug development or get a quicker diagnosis? Um, utilizing and leveraging the, the individuals that are already on those centers of excellence across the United States, that would be a good um, first starting point. And we have over 40 now. And so um, there's links and contact information. You know, we just encourage that if it is that you are looking at them to just ensure that um, if you make an appointment, that your insurance is on par but there is is also information for each center related to financial and billing. So, you know, we just want to make sure we encourage you guys to do that as well if you're looking to seek a specialist or get more information on your rare diagnosis. And in the healthcare professional spectrum, many um, colleges across the United States are now emphasizing individualized medicine or precision medicine or offering various elective courses in kind of these unique or um, 
niche areas of healthcare. So Midwestern University, in addition to the elective course that Karen offers and the one that I have with rare disorders, we also have a certificate program for precision medicine. And really the precision medicine, individualized medicine, I, I feel like is the, the way of the future. And that's how we're going to continue, be able to continue to drive drug development and drug research in fact, you know that the FDA has had some good initiatives lately that really have promoted more drug development with orphan drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's where many of these um, different agents that Karen was talking about, they really originated um, within the accelerated drug approval or the, the orphan drug kind of pipeline. One of the other fairly recent, I would say, big during the pandemic areas that has helped a lot of people with um, rare diseases has been increased access to telehealth. Okay. Because one of the problems with a lot of the people that have rare conditions, there's not a specialist anywhere near them. There may be three specialists in the entire country. And if you don't live within travel distance of them, especially if you have a medically fragile child and all of your money is going towards their care, you don't have a lot of money to get yourself several states away to go see a provider. They may be able to do telehealth visits for a lot of the more specialized care and then be able to be with you know, a primary physician for just routine things. And I, I think telehealth and telemedicine really has opened up many doors for individuals that are impacted um, by rare disorders. Um, in addition to telemedicine, if patients do need to get to particular healthcare providers and they are across the, the nation or the country, NOR does have some financial assistance that is dedicated for the, those patients. I don't know, Alicia, if you feel comfortable kind of expanding yes. on the travel assistance. So our travel assistance program, it is, um, some of the programs are disease specific. However, my team, the information and resource services team, uh, we can explore resources. There are resources available in general that can help with getting um, patients to providers outside of their area. And, you know, you can always call us or, um, and our information's on the website, I'll say it. I don't know if it can be put anywhere, but it's 800-469-0283. Or you can email us at information services at rarediseases.org and or just go on the website and we'll be able to assist in finding the appropriate resources for you. We are nearing our 30 minute live mark. Are there any last comments? Karen? I, I think we've covered everything that immediately comes to my mind. Well, that is all the time we have for today. I do want to thank Karen and Alicia for joining us today to celebrate Rare Disease Day. We hope that you found Midwestern University's free community health lecture series helpful. And even more importantly, we hope this conversation has inspired you to show your strides this Rare Disease Day and every day. Thank you for your attendance and have a great afternoon. Take care.